Hi Kathleen, thanks for joining. Well, I'm doing a fun, relaxing project this afternoon and I'm happy you guys are joining along. I'm Deborah, Deborah Booker Designs and I'm in Surprise, Arizona. I do have, currently I have two booths, one in Phoenix at the Brass Armadillo and one in Surprise at Ground Floor um, Artist. And recently that's where I've been doing my lives from. But today, um, I just had a hard time deciding today what project I was going to do, to be honest. Usually I have these things planned out. Hi, Brad Hall. Brad Hall's my cousin. Usually I have these things planned out ahead of time. Um, but today just wasn't one of those days. Today I had so many ideas, I couldn't decide what to do today. And so this is it, and I'm glad this is what I decided to do. So let me show you real quick. I have these two cute little bird houses. I put the camera so it wasn't backwards for you guys, and so it's always crazy for me, so. Hi Donna, thanks for joining us. So we're gonna do a fun project today working with uh, paper clay. And the product that I like to use is the Creative Paper Clay. It's got the horse head on the front of it. I've used it for years and I always get really good results. Hi Donna. And so that's what I'm using today. And I will be demonstrating how to use the amazing uh, casting resin and this is the fast one. There's a slow one that takes 20 hours and this is the, the fast one that takes about 10 or 12 minutes. So we'll do some molds with that. And then I have two bird houses. I have this one that I did this little piece for and I think that's so fancy looking. And even though the top was higher than my peak here. I just brought it straight up. I really think it's cute. And then I have a second birdhouse here. This way. And I picked up, because you know how I am at the Goodwill, so I picked up a silver candlestick and I'm gonna put the birdhouse on top of the candlestick. I think that looks cute. And originally I thought I was going to paint this candlestick, but I don't think I will. I think I'll just polish it up and leave it on this birdhouse. I like, I love silver anyway, and so just having it on a silver piece I think is a cute idea. So we've got Marcella and Kathleen and Brad. Tell me what you guys are all up to. I'm gonna put the camera down so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, so hang with me for a second. Okay, there's always a lag. There's always, oh, you just got home from work, huh, Brad? I'm just getting to work. Actually, I've been working all day, but um, there's always a lag on the camera. Hi, Lois, thanks for joining us. So I think I have you guys in the camera now. 
So as I was saying, I'm Deborah Booker with Deborah Booker Designs. I'm in Surprise, Arizona. I have two locations currently, one um, in Phoenix at the Brass Armadillo and one in Surprise at Ground Floor Artist. Today, I'm just working from home. Um, and this is kind of like playing. This isn't even like work. So I've gotten a few things started and if you're just coming on, I'll, I'll catch you up with it. I do have one, I have several announcements, honestly. One of them is if you are one of my customers that shops regularly at the Brass Armadillo, I have sad news. Um, I'm going to be closing that location uh, as of April 16th. So I will start pulling inventory out of there on the after the 30th, like April 1st. Um, sales there have just plummeted and I have a high theft issue in that location and it's just time. Um, so I would recommend if you're one of those people that frequents that location um, to go ahead and get stocked up. Otherwise, um, product is always available for online. Um, you can place an order online and you can either have it shipped or you can um, select pick up and come pick it up. So I wanted to give people a heads up on that in case you wanted to get stocked up. So what I'm doing, since a lot of you have just signed on, is what I'm doing is I'm doing two birdhouses. This one, see that cute little piece of clay molding that I just put on there? I love that piece. And that's what I'm molding in, in the mold right now. And then I have a second birdhouse. And all we're doing is using clay and the resin today to fancy them up. And this birdhouse will sit on top of the silver candlestick that I picked up at the Goodwill. And I have a little surprise too. Um, so what I did to catch you up on it is I just use a little bit of cornstarch and a small brush and I just dust it into the molds before I start. You only do that if you're using the clay. If you're, if you're using the resin, you don't need to do that. And then that helps it release easily. And some molds, it's just, they're just gonna be hard. It just depends on each mold that you're doing whether it's gonna be an easy one or a hard one. Um, but I'd already done this one. This is that one I showed you on the little church thing. But I have another idea for another one. So right now, for some reason, I'm in this tin can phase. Um, I can't explain it, I just, I just am. And so I've been saving them because I'm gonna put my tomato startings and vegetable startings and a bunch of them, but also, I have another project that I want to work on with you guys, and maybe I'll do it next week um, using the tin cans and making a cute floral placard thing because you can just flatten them up. But this one, I just thought as long as I was doing this, I would do it with you guys. So I'm going to take a little bit of glue. Let me see if you guys have questions. Hi, Lisa. Oh, Lisa, you're not too late. You know, it always takes a while. Hi, Joan. You know, Elva, hello, Elva. It always takes a while to, um, you know, for people to get logged on and I don't wanna to get too far ahead. So did you see how I just used, I don't throw away gift cards or, you know, your room keys at hotels. First of all, you should never do that, even when they ask for them back because that has all your credit card information on them. So don't do that. Hang on to them because you can always use them for your clay. And so I'm going to put some glue on here and just butter it up real good. 
I taught a class um, maybe a month ago on using the paper clay and they wanted to do terracotta pots so that's what we did and they turned out really pretty and it was a super fun class with a super fun group of gals and um, so there's so many things you know the the molds are mostly used on furniture to embellish furniture but they work so great for everything else so I'm going to take this tin can and I'm going to put this mold that I just did on this can and voila I need to bring it up a little bit but it just fits perfect and then I'm just going to press it all down Make sure all my edges have made good contact. And then I'm gonna just set it aside and I'll paint it later. But it will be great for pencils and scissors and paint brushes, flowers. I just think it's a really cute idea. And I love the detail on that mold. And you saw how easily that came out. And if you're just tuning in, I'm also gonna demonstrate how to use, whoa, that was my glue. How to use the, hi Lisa. Thanks, I think it's pretty too. Not bad for a green bean can. I'm going to also demonstrate how to use the fast setting um, resin. Usually I like to use the slow setting, but you know, for demonstration purposes today, we'll, we'll do some of the fast setting. And so working ahead of you guys, I, the same one I just showed you on the tin can, I put on, I'm trying to get, get up there in the camera so you can see, on the steeple, and you can see that it go, it's a little taller than my roof line is, but I just, I just ran it on up to the top, and I think it's super cute. So I'm going to continue to embellish these two little churches. And the other church, I picked up a candlestick, a silver candlestick at the Goodwill, and it's sitting on top of that. Okay, so then I've got, I went ahead and just powdered it with a cornstarch and then just rolled it out. And can you see how clean all of my edges are? That's really important when you're doing um, your molds. That way you're gonna get a nice clean edge when you unmold it and you're gonna have all of your design in there. So now I'm going to unmold this one. And I like to use a piece of mylar or, or plastic um, uh, placemat because I just first of all I like to have that surface to work on but if I need to pick it up and get something in my hands um, then I don't run the risk of breaking it and you just bend your molds over they're very flexible just like that and then I need to measure it to put it I'm going to put it what am I gonna do because I was thinking, I have so many really pretty ones here. I was thinking that I was gonna use another trim, but I think I'm gonna put this trim around the, the roof line, I think is what I'm gonna do. So it's gonna go there there. So let me get my 
palette knife. I'll use my X-Acto knife. And I'm gonna just cut it right off there. And then let's see, does that give me enough? It does. And I just have a little scrap left, but I'm just going to throw it back in my bag and I'll use it on something else. So again, I'm going to do like I did on the other piece. I'm just going to butter it up. My cap got clogged up. So I'm just pouring straight out of the bottle, which is a little dangerous, but what the heck. So I'm going to put that one there. And I should mention that these are silicone molds, and besides using them for paper clay and the acrylic, you can use them for um, your baking. They make the prettiest pie crust you've ever seen. I'll show you some, some of the other ones that make beautiful pie crusts. And uh, you can use them for cupcakes and all kinds of really pretty things. Isn't that pretty? Super cute, I think. Give me some hearts if you like this. I'm gonna turn it around this way for you guys. Come on, give me some hearts, you guys. I'm not seeing any hearts. Okay, so I wanna I want to continue that. I think I want to do the same thing up there. This is the mold that I'm using. And unfortunately, this mold has been out of commission for about a year now. Um, they haven't discontinued it, but you know, all of this stuff comes from China. So um, blame it on the Chinese. That's what I say. So I think I'm going to hold off doing this ridge up here because I just um, can't decide what I'm going to do. That's the truth. But what I am going to do, see, wouldn't that make a beautiful pie crust doing your crisscross latches? Here's another one. I just think these are gorgeous. I can't eat pie, but... If I could, I would. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside so that you can watch. I'm gonna put the lid on here so I don't accidentally knock it off. And I'm going to mix up. Hang on. I like to use these little silicone cups to um, mix the resin in. And I have a bigger one. Now the thing about this resin, you guys, and this is really important, there's two different kinds. There's the long setting, and that's what I use the most 
the majority of the time and it's um, it's clear resin like this piece. And so when items are big like this or intricate, then I like to use this resin for them. But this is the one that takes about 20 hours to set up. And if it's something I wanna get done quickly, like on this live, then I use the white resin and it sets up really fast. And so you have to know what you're doing and work fast with it, because I can't tell you how many times it has actually just set up in my cup. Um, and that's really aggravating when that happens. So we're gonna use the fast setting one. And the key to doing using the fast setting one is just pour small portions at a time. You might have to mix more than more often, but then you don't waste it. You don't have it um, setting up in the middle of your pour. And I marked the one that I wanted to use, and it's not the one in front of me. It's this one. Okay. So I want to pour. this and I'm going to put I'm going to show you close up I'm going to pour this keyhole not that one this one right here I'm going to pour that keyhole and it's going to go across this way on here and right here make sure you guys are in camera and another fun thing is, you know those little wire lights with the little tiny mini lights in them? I thought they'd be super fun to just throw in a hole in there and just light it up on the inside too. I got a bunch of those, so. Okay, so in mixing this, it comes with two, three little cups. Why they give you three, I don't know. And I've ordered a bunch of these extra from Amazon, so I always have plenty on hand. And if I was pouring the clear resin that takes a long time, I would use these cups. But because I'm pouring such a small amount, I'm gonna go ahead and use these cups. And uh, you have a A side and a B side. So here's the A side, and here's the B side. And so what you do, let's see if I have a, I had a pin over here, I don't know where it went. Let me grab a pen. Okay, so it has measurements on here in um, milliliters. And so I'm going to mark, just so I'm, it's marked on here, but I just wanna put a darker mark so it's easier to see pin isn't being very good. A Sharpie would work better. So I'm gonna pour 10 and 10. So I'm only gonna use one cup and I'm gonna start off with the A. And I always recommend you read the instructions because this is what gets me in trouble. So I told you this one sets up really fast. It, it only gives you two minutes, two minutes to pour into your piece. So you need to have everything ready. Um, so, it, but stirring is important. So. I'm going to pour equal amounts. 
stir for 30 or 40 seconds, and then I have a minute to a minute and a half. And that's why you need to be quick with this. Otherwise, you'll do like I've done and be sad. I like to have a couple of toothpicks handy. Hi, Vicki. Hi, Charlene. Hi, Ellie. And you guys, I have this amazing resin in my favorites on my website, and it's a direct link. I get it from Amazon, but I do have an affiliate link for Amazon. So if you're interested, the, I sell the clay on my website, and you can order this resin. And so I'm just gonna pour a small amount, just 10 milli, milliliters, and another important detail is to be sure that you're pouring exact measurements of each kind. You can't have too much of one and not enough of the other or they will not cure and set up. So I've got, need to get it in the light and be sure. 10 milliliters. in this little cup. And instead of using another cup, I'm just going to pour 10 more milliliters in here and stir it up in this little cup. Another reason that I like the silicone cups better is um, a couple of reasons. They squish like this. And so when you're pouring in detailed molds and stuff, it's easier to pour with those than it is these little plastic cups. And the cleanup is real easy because it's silicone and the resin just peels right out of it. Okay, so the clock is ticking now, you guys. Tick, tick. So I'm gonna stir it up and I got 30 seconds. I don't wanna to get too involved in the stirring. Basically, when you don't see any cloudiness anymore, you're ready to go. This cup in here is flimsy and I like to have a toothpick handy to get into all the nooks and crannies. And using the resin instead of the clay is, I don't like using this little cup. I'm gonna pour it in this one. See, because I have a little pour spout and it does make it easier. And if you have leftover resin, just pour it into another mold. Let's see. Well, I think I have enough for this one. And another clue that it's setting up on you is um, that you can feel it warming up in your cup. So when you feel it start to heat up, speed up. Don't think there's enough to pour anything more in there. Hmm. We'll try this one. 
It'll just pop out if there's not enough. And also, I'm already seeing the color change on here. So I'm gonna throw this away. I don't want it on the table. So while this is setting up, I have another little thing to show you guys, is sometimes, can you guys see that that's getting all milky white? Do you see it changing? That's mean it's starting to cure. And that's what I've had it do in the cup which is really annoying. But when it's all white, then we can pull it right off. So it's also nice that you can work with it quickly. And if you get them done and you need to go around curvy places, if you do it right away, you can. If you let them sit and harden, then you won't be able to. So. Before we went live, I did this little bee, and he's got, he's got legs and antenna and his wings. And if you just use the paper clay in there, they frequently get broken off. But a little trick to uh, molds that are more delicate like this is to put them in the mold, clean your edges really well, and then throw them in the freezer for about 10 or 15 minutes and then take them out. And normally you would let them set for three or four minutes, but I'm gonna go ahead and try unmolding this. I've done it before and it worked really well. Um, but you know, when you're on live, that, that's no guarantee that it's gonna work this time. And so I'm just gonna turn him over and like all the rest of them, it's very flexible. And I'm just using a toothpick to help pry him out. It's like giving birth, you guys. Slow. There we go. And all the antenna and legs are all attached. So this is a nice little trick. Can you see? He's got all his little antenna and feet and wings. So that's a good little trick when you've got molds that under normal, normal circumstances are tricky to work with. This is another good trick to try out. And I'm running low on molds right now, you guys. Um, normally I have a really good stock and I will be ordering again shortly and I'm a retailer for redesign by Prima and that's what all of these brown molds are are redesign um, the really big ones that I showed you that would make great pie crust those are IOD iron orchid designs and they have really beautiful molds also but I'm not a retailer for them, so you'll have to reach out to someone who is. Okay, so continuing on with this, this piece right here is gonna go across under, I'm gonna move this forward.
turn it around for you guys. So the piece that I just poured is going to go right here. And I need to come up with some trim here and some trim here and some trim here. And there are two trim molds. By the way, you guys, I got both of these cute little bird houses at um, Walmart the other day. I was picking up my prescriptions and I had to wait, so I went strolling around. So I think I'm gonna use this design here, this one, with the clay. Hi, Frankie. Hi, Charlene. Hi, Robin. Haven't seen you in a while, Robin. Hi, Ellie. Do you guys have any questions? Hi, Gail watching from Tennessee. Vicki. You guys are all probably too young to remember, but when I was a little girl, there was... Um, a TV show called Romper Room. And when she started the show, she would hold up a mirror, like a magic mirror, and she'd say your name. And I would sit there on the floor, holding my breath, just waiting for her to say my name. And thank goodness for me, Debbie is a common name, at least it was in the 50s. And I would just sit there, and then when she'd finally say my name, I was just so thrilled because I was positive that she saw me in that magic mirror. Oh, to be so sweet and gullible. Okay, so you just push it in, and pushing it in is really important because you need to get your clay down in all of that detail. but you want it leveled off on the top. So, you know, I'm pushing it in, but I don't wanna leave it like that. I wanna have a nice clean edge. And that's when these um, room key cards and gift cards and stuff come in handy to help you with that. Of course, this, this clay is nice and fresh, so it's super easy to work with. There are other brands out there, and there's only one other brand that I hear good things about. The rest of them really have, I've tried a few of them and they're horrible to work with, but this creative paper clay is really awesome. I always get really good results from it. Now when this dries, it's gonna dry hard and you can paint right over it. And um, people use the larger molds for um, decorating their furniture, adding pieces to it, like on, on this mold that we just poured into, um, on a hundred year old dresser that I did, I sold it at the Pinners conference. I used, um, the resin to make, it had five keyholes on that. There was two drawers on the top and then three drawers um, beneath it. And they all had keyholes. And so I did keyhole all matching and then I painted them with the bronze and put on there and oh, they were so pretty. And you would never know that they were resin. And uh, if you guys saw me do the sunflower dresser, I use molds, I put some transfers on there, but I did also did molds and did three-dimensional sunflowers on there. That's one of my favorite pieces I've ever done. I don't want my little bee to get smashed over here. So do you guys have any questions? Hey, Beauty for Ashes. Marianne, 
Peggy. Cool. Um, so give me thumbs up if you guys have done this before, either with the clay or with the resin. And tell me if you're interested in doing it now that you've watched it be demonstrated. Okay, I did a good job of cleaning my edges just with my fingertips, but if I had a really big mold and wanted to be sure it was clean, I would just use this card and use the edge to go over it. If you guys are just tuning in, I did this tin can earlier at the beginning, and I think it's really cool, and I'm going to uh, use it for pens or pencils or scissors or paint brushes or something. I'm gonna paint it up. But look how fancy you can make something so simple. And I have a candlestick from the Goodwill that the birdhouse is going to sit on. I have two birdhouses here. The camera makes it hard for you guys to see, but that's pretty cool, I think. And I got these birdhouses for, I think they were like five bucks at Walmart, and they're nice little birdhouses. And they're, this is just really relaxing and fun. It's just nice to sit here if I wasn't talking to myself and talking to you guys, I would um, have a good movie on and just sit here and play with my clay. And I was just sitting here thinking earlier how lucky I am I get to do this every single day. Now, I'm seeing some little cracks in here and that'll be okay, but I'll tell you why. I know what happened to cause them. I'm gonna see if I can lift this up. I love to work on these Mylar sheets because if you do need to pick it up, it makes it really easy to pick up. But there are, like there's a crack there, there's a crack there. I saw one down here. And what caused that, that, you know, I had little rolls of clay and when I pressed them in, I didn't press them hard enough to connect them to the roll that I had just finished off. And so that's what causes that. And it's no big deal. I can take a wet paintbrush and go over it and smooth it out. And frankly, even if it cracks when it dries, it just adds to the antiquity, antiquity, antiquity of the project. So, it's, you know, I'm just relaxed. I'm just having fun. I don't really care if it has a little crack on it. That's the God's honest truth. So I'm going to lay it on here to measure it. Of course, that crack couldn't be where it wouldn't matter. And just take my little X-Acto knife and cut it. Save that for another spot. Isn't that cute, you guys? I might just do the trim going up the sides over here. But you know, it'd be really cute to just have trim going up. Instead of just doing it on the edge, just doing the trim. I might do that. I didn't mean to lay that there, but that's cute there. That was a happy accident. So this time, I'm just gonna glue my edge. Hello, Mary Ann. So you've not used paper clay. You just bought the Form Flex compound and have started to play with that and you really do not have any good molds yet. Um, well, the when I mentioned earlier that there was only one other clay that I've heard good things about, and that is the flex form. Um, but I've used this clay for four years, and I love it so much that I don't have any reason to 
switch over to another brand. And I have no idea cost-wise how that works out. And I really love using Tight Bond glue. I use this for everything. It's wood glue and I use it literally for everything. And I just want to get a good, I think I got plenty on now, a good layer of the glue on there. And this is the piece that's got a little bit of crackage going on, but that's okay too. It's still stinking cute. And I could take I could take one of these little trims and go around the top and the bottom of this too. I just let it speak to you. So you put on a piece, like the first piece I put on was this, because I just love, love, love that little piece. And then this trim is really pretty. And now I think I'm gonna do some pieces there. There'll be like stripes going up. But let's, before we do that, let's see how our resin is doing over here. So this is the piece that I poured to put here. And it doesn't matter that part of it's clay and part of it's resin. And so when you start to bend the mold, if you see it flexing out, then it's ready to take out. And while it's still in this early state, if you wanted to bend it onto to a piece to conform it, you could. Once it's out and you let it sit for a while, then it won't conform. Right now, it's still in a bendable state. So while I have this one out, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on this piece, which since no real birds will be going in there, that'll be okay. I might might just hold off on putting this on because I'm thinking I might want to go ahead and paint it in the gold or the bronze and the rest of the house is going to be done in a dark gray probably hurricane gray and then I will take a dry brush and um, fluff and dry brush all over it so the hurricane gray will be down here in all of this detail um, but when I dry brush over it, the house is actually going to look like it's white. But I might not want to do that with this piece. I might want to just paint this first and then glue it on because I don't want it to be dry brushed. So that's what I'm going to do. But that's where it's going to go. So let me show you guys popping out the rest of these molds. And so anytime I'm pouring molds, I I try to fill that cup up to the amount that I want it to be. Hi, Kathy, how are you? Kathy's working on a beautiful dresser right now herself that's all molds. But, you know, when you've got leftover product, you don't want it to go to waste. So always have plenty of molds, more than you th think you need. And Go ahead and use that leftover product to get the rest of your um, resin used. And just flex your molds to get them out. 
And then remember I had a little spot where I had just a little bit left in my cup and I poured it in here and it's, it's not enough to do anything. Um, but it will still just peel up and out. So that's that. Um, and then that is how I end up with a whole silver tray full of molded pieces. But then the next time I want something, I can just dig through here and pick out what I want and I don't have to wait for it to set up or to do it. But just remember, anytime you're using the white fast setting, pour small amounts and let it, uh, you know, just keep remixing. Don't pour a big cup of it and think that you're gonna get it poured out in time because you won't. And some of us just have to learn the hard way. That would be me. So I'm thirsty. <laughs> Mary, you really do. Did you see both of them? I have to show you guys again. Mary and her best friends, they all did uh, a clay, a pot, potted clay class. But here, I got these, um, Mary, at Walmart. They were like $5, I think, in that price range. And then at the Goodwill, I found... Uh, a silver candlestick and of course I'll shine it all up but the birds look really cute the birdhouses look really cute on the candlestick so and I was just telling everybody this is just like playing this is like fun this isn't hard work most of the time what I'm doing is usually hard work doesn't feel like fun most of the time. Okay, so I'm going to do an edge going down and I really liked it when it was laying here, but I'm glad I got this piece on here first because this piece isn't gonna let me, I'm gonna have to do it on the edges unless I do a short one there, which is a possibility. It's just like you just put a piece on, look at it, decide if you like it, and then just keep going. So I'm gonna do one more piece for you guys and then I'm gonna let you go. So on my piece going down on each side there, I think I'm gonna use this one. We haven't used it yet. I'm going to use this last one on the edge. Yes, that's right, Kathy. The more resin that's in there, the faster it's going to set up. And you can feel it. And if you feel it heating up on you, you better start pouring, pouring, pouring. I've just learned to pour very small amounts. It's okay. So you guys, I know this isn't um, the clay related or craft related, but it just popped into my head. So I finished watching the Gilded Age last night and I'm sad that the season is over. So all my shows are over. Yellowstone's over, 1883's over, Gilded Age is over. I don't know what I'm gonna watch now. I guess I'll just watch myself. You guys, please go to my YouTube channel and um, like and subscribe. I'm really working hard on getting that going. I've got maybe 20 videos up so far. But I would really love it if you guys, I'm on TikTok, I'm on YouTube, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook. 
And I have a monthly newsletter that goes out in the email. I don't, I don't spam you with a bunch of emails because I hate that. <clears throat> but if you've ever purchased from me, you should automatically be on the email list. If you've ordered on my website, you should automatically be on that list. If you aren't receiving um, a monthly newsletter, it, it tells you all the new things that are going on, like I've started designing my own decoupage tissues. And I have, I have about eight finished, and I received my samples of them last week and this week, and I'm super excited about them. And then I just designed four or five more, and I gotta get them off to the printer. But be watching for it. That's one of the things that's in my newsletter are some of the new designs. They are uh, 18 pound paper, 20 by 30. So they are designed and made for furniture, but you can always cut them down. And I'm gonna do some project blocks also. But that's super fun. That's really relaxing also. Okay, so I forgot to use my cornstarch. So we'll see how this one comes out. Usually these molds are pretty good, but we'll see. I might have to do some coaxing. And I like to have a toothpick handy to do coaxing. So it's not impossible, but it does make it a little trickier. Um, where my shop is in Surprise is with a group of wonderful artists. There's 39 of them there. And a lot of them are clay artist, pottery art artist. And so I came in with all of these molds a couple of weeks ago and they just about lost their mind. They were all playing, the molds were there for two weeks and they were all playing and having a great time. Kind of inching out like a worm. it out. And I did press down harder on it when I was putting it in there so I don't have any like major cracks going on. So now I just need to, I'm going to just measure this one. I'm going to get my my flexible ruler. I sell these, you guys, they're four bucks. You will not find them any cheaper anywhere else. And they are great rulers for like, if you wanted to measure around this can, because you needed to know how much ribbon or whatever, it, it just bends right around. And then you know that this can is, went the wrong direction. I don't want to smash my mold. It's 10 inches round. These rulers are great. I use them for everything. So this little piece in here looks like it's about two and a half. So we'll just cut it out at two and a half. Let's 
see how I did. Do the same here. And you know, if you get interrupted um, and you can't finish what you've started, just put your pieces in a Ziploc bag with a damp paper towel. Um, and then when you're able, I wouldn't wait too long, but then when you're able to get back, back to it, it'll all still be okay. And once you open up a package of clay, you want to do the same thing. You want to um, close it up and, I'm just thinking you guys, close it up and then put a wet paper towel in there and then put it in a Ziploc bag to keep it fresh. Okay, let me turn this around. You guys tell me what you think. I'd have to cut it because it's a little too long, but I was thinking about, this is the same border that I put here. I was thinking about putting it here and here. Wait, tell me what you guys think. Give me hearts up if you like that idea or if you don't think so. Kathy, you say you so exciting you can't wait. Is that you can't wait to see the tissues? It's super, super exciting. Every time I get the the samples in the mail, I um it's like Christmas time. In fact, one of them, one of the designs is a vintage Santa Claus from back in the 1800s. He's so pretty. And I had been looking for one like him for ever because I have this really cool uh, canvas roll up canvas that I wanted to do them on in fact I showed you guys those canvases last year but I could never find the Santa I wanted and that was one of the reasons I thought okay let me see what I can do if I can just design my own and so that's how that started and it's so much fun Okay, so you guys, I saw some hearts come up, so you're thinking I should put this little roll up here in the roof line. I think that's kind of cute too, so I'm going to do that. I'm just going to do it. So, I need to get these guys glued on first. Just buttering it up. And this glue dries clear, so if you get it in a spot that you don't want it, don't worry. It's okay. You know, you can do this also. Um, you, those um, paper mache or cardboard houses you see you know like little villages um you can do the same thing 
for like a Christmas decoration. You can have your whole little church and village and all the little houses and light them up with all of those cute little twinkle lights. But I have a thing for birds. I just have a thing about birds. And, and I was just looking, when I was working on this before we went live, I was just thinking that I have one, two, three, four, four bird cages just in this room alone. Well, Kathy, you're an expert now. Kathy did a headboard all in floral and roses, and it's stunning. It's truly a work of art. It's truly a work of love, because that was a lot of work. I'm going to take my palette knife and just squish this one down. And you guys, I didn't have any pre-planned idea. The only thing I knew was I loved this piece, and since it had a peak on there, I just thought, ooh, I just love that. I'm going to make that work up there. And I love this so much, I thought, oh, that would be really cool on this tin can. You may end up seeing it on a whole bunch of things because I think that's so pretty. And so it's literally just looking at the molds and looking at your piece and figuring out what's going to fit, what's going to look good. So I need to get another little piece up there. But you guys have been on here a little over an hour. So I'm going to bring the camera back up. Okay, so here we are, people. I know that light really glares on it, but the detail is super pretty. I really, really like it. It's a fun piece. And then this is the one on the candlestick. Isn't that cute? Candle, a wooden candlestick would look good, but I happen to have a silver one because I find silver all the time. Yeah, the, the details are, you know, look at the difference between these two. Because they basically started out the same. This one doesn't have anything on it. And we've been building and adding. Whoops. Oh, that's the part I didn't glue on. Building and adding onto this just piece by piece. And it's just coming alive before our very eyes. And I'll keep working on it. And then I'll post pictures on Facebook for you guys. There's a little hole back here too, you guys. Another little peeper hole. Really cute for a few bucks at Walmart. Who knew? Who knew? All right, so, hi Ellie. Okay, you guys, um, that's it. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I really appreciate it. Every single time you guys take time out of your busy days to sit here and paint or craft with me. Um, hi, Liberta. So um, thank you so much. And I'm on here every single Tuesday at 
four o'clock Mountain Standard Time, and I always do an event in Facebook. So all you have to do is just say going, and then it will send you an alert and remind you when I'm going live. And if you don't catch me live, then catch me on the replay and just do pound replay so I know you came in and watched. Thanks so much, you guys. I really appreciate it. You guys have a great evening.